So in Alpha Investments video, the glory days are over. Obviously, um, I disagree with that. I think a simple change, as draconic as it might be, which is firing everybody in Wizard of Coast and rehiring talented individuals, uh, would save the game. Uh, magic has been dying a lot. In fact, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, I was a kid during Chronicles, but one period in time I remember not being able to find too many people interested in magic was Ice Age Alliance. Those were incredibly boring periods in time. Uh, I mean, when I mean incredibly boring, I meant if we didn't have Urza's Saga, Urza's Destiny, if we didn't have the Urza block right after, I think the game could have died. A lot of people sold their collections during Ice Age and Alliance. Many of you are newer players and you might not know this. Like I, So the Chronicle part, I don't remember. I was too young to remember that. I wasn't really that into magic in Chronicles, right? So I, and I didn't honestly own any of the valuable magic cards that were being reprinted in Chronicles anyway. So in terms of impact, I don't know if people were queer or not. I just didn't, you know, I was just too young. But that was the first crisis that then created a reserve list. There was a second crisis that is often not talked about. Uh, that was the, we had play, uh, we had a format called Extended. Um, it was just like wild, but at that time, Ice Age is a very boring set. And we had the Necropotence era, which I think they had to ban Necropotence. But again, I wasn't like a, a pro player or anything. I was just like a ca super casual young player. I remember a lot of people telling me, like older people telling me, oh, this game sucks, you shouldn't play the game, the game will be dead the next year during this after alliance with the Force of Wills and the Contagions. And I remember Contagion, I thought Contagion would be the most valuable card. Free creature removal. I thought, wow, creature removal for free. Um, it survived because it did one blank, it did probably one of the best sets it's ever done. Or is it the, or is it one of the best blocks that have ever come, but even to the point of one of the best sets. All those people who said they were gonna quit, who sold their collection during Ice Age or Alliance, they all came back and they came back with a fury during Urza's Saga. And that's what I remember. I remember Urza Saga going to my GameStop and Radio Shack and then you had two choices, first edition Pokemon or Urza Saga, unlimited Pokemon or Urza Saga, right? These were the choices that I had to make at the time and Urza Saga was always very, very good. I mean, I, we were in elementary school and all my friends, we played it because, you know, even the ones that, you know, quit during Ice Age and so on, they played Urza Saga. It was a very powerful, very creative, very well done set. The lore was on point. Um, everything was very good. It doesn't take much to bring this game back. And this is why the glory days and all this remnant, it takes one set. I've seen it. Magic was on its deathbed. And then Arthur Saga came along. And all my friends played Magic again. Like this. So like as much as Magic players complain and they whine and they, you know, you know I mean, you know, you know Magic players, right? All it takes is one banger of a set. And everyone come back. Right? Now is that Dominary United? No. Is that British War? Interesting, but probably not. Maybe in New Phyrexia, I don't know. I don't know, I, I don't make these sets, right? But it doesn't take very much. And that's what I learned about this game is when it's times like um, in the 2008 recession, we had Lorwyn, Morning Tide, you know, was it Morning Tide or Evening Tide or both? I don't know what, what it was, whatever it was, right? Well, guess what set came after? I mean, so, so we went from Ravnica and then we had kind of a dip a banger of a set can save the game because we don't need every set to be successful. We just need most of them not to be like Dragon Maze. Um, so I remember uh, in law school, Innistrad, wow, that was unique. You know, the goth, you know, that was during the Twilight type hot period where like everyone was about Twilight and vampires. Uh, vampires, zombies, right? There's a lot of zombie apocalypse movies at that time. Walking Dead was super popular at the time. And bang, they hit it, they hit on the nail. Innistrad was a fantastic set. It will always remain, because it was the first set that I played when I was really like, you know, had the money, if you will, to play the game properly. It was one of the best sets um, ever, in my opinion. So Innistrad, Dark Ascension, it wasn't that great, and then Avacyn Restored. But even before then, you had like a pretty good set, New Phyrexia was a very interesting set. 
Um, so we didn't, uh, oh, you also know JC Mind Sculptor, um, you know, so that was uh, Ward Wake, yeah. So all it takes is one killer set to make it all, all better. Now, ideally it would be a killer, killer block, like Urza Saga was an amazing block. And everyone's happy, collectors are happy, uh, players are happy, everyone's happy because there's some value, there's some uniqueness, and there's some like, wow, this is really powerful, very unique, very intelligently designed. My favorite card in Urza Saga isn't like Cradle or anything, it's uh, Pestilence. The card that I remember most playing at my kitchen, t at my uh, lunch table in uh, middle school, in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth, or was, uh, seventh grade, eighth grade, especially Pestilence. You know, it felt so powerful just to pay the black and just board wipe all the time, right? It's just insanity, like, and then you also do, like, it's just like insanity how much that in a multiplayer game that common could control. Contamination, not that, we, I mean, precedent's more relevant because we had more, it's common. Contamination being a rare. But man, those were fun days. And no one, no one playing in Ice Age and Lions thought that they would just continue to play Magic, man. They thought Magic was dead. Then you design a set, like Urza Saga. You design a set, like Return to Ravnica. I hate the guy who designed Return to Ravnica, but he did a good job. Props to him, it was a great set. You design a, a killer set, everyone's coming back. Everyone's coming back. All those people who are whining and complaining, I bet you there will be that pre-release the next, there, there will be a pre-release. And that's what they need. You know, it's, it's, not, it's very simple business economics. So if your business is failing and your product or service is not you know, selling, what you need is you need to improve the product, you, you need to improve the quality of your product or service, like exponentially. And then suddenly your old customers will come back and be like, wow, this is really cool. And you're, and then you're getting new customers as well coming. It's not like a mind blowing thing that needs to happen right now. It's just that they have to do a really good set. They have to make it very creative. They gotta just go, they gotta go all out. There's no more, this is kind of like a Marvel remover problem where they're doing quantity and then supposedly now they're gonna do quality. When you just kind of, all these stupid things like Sea Hulk and I, I, I think Sea Hulk is interesting, but I'm just saying that like, there's so many different things, right? <laughs> and it's like, man, this is boring, right? Because the quality of each of the things that you put out, like if you can put out one good set a year, well done. You don't need to put out 50 sets that suck a year. Just focus on one or two really good sets. You might have some filler sets, of course, that you know didn't work. And that's the problem. That's how you save it. I, I, I disagree with Alpha Investment. I, don't, I think the glory days of Magic may be ahead of us. Because I, I go back to that time point when I everyone's quitting the game and I ask myself, what has happened? Oh, Urza Saga. And they, they made the big, the big chain. They actually had the uh, color. The, so you could tell it's like a rare. <laughs> you know, God forbid, right? Back then, we didn't even know what was rare on common if you're a new player. I remember Morphling, oh, Morphling and Squee, oh God. Those two were so annoying. Cause they were so expensive that like you as a kid can't afford them. So when you're playing against like adults, they're just beating you down with their Morphling. You don't even know what it's doing. You're just like, oh, I'm dead, am I dead? <laughs> Bye guys.